as North Korea refuses to play nice, worldwide tensions are increasing. Some could say we are in a new era of Cold War. But what would we do if modern D-Day ever came to pass? Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, I'm Rebecca Felgate and today we're continuing our popular World War series by answering the question, how would we survive nuclear fallout? Of course, our question totally depends on where you are in relation to the bomb detonation. A North Korean nuke has a death radius of around 500 meters, but an 800 kiloton Russian Topol has a kill radius of 4.25 kilometers. Here, fallout could spread around 350 kilometers away. If you're close enough to the center of the detonation, I'm afraid it's curtains for you. Should you be lucky enough to avoid the blast radius, here is what you have to do to survive. The first key to survival is preparation. In times like these, keeping a supply of bottled water, tinned food, and a medical kit to last you and your family a week is a very good idea. Of course, a nuclear attack could strike anywhere at any time of day, so you may need to stockpile in all of your likely locations. At the very least, you must always travel with water, which is useful in so, so many situations, not just high drama nuclear attacks. The moment you will become aware of a nuclear attack will be when you see a bright flash of light or a mushroom cloud. If you ever see a brighter than sunlight flash, you must do your best to look away from the source as it could blind you. You also must immediately take cover. Now is not the time to get to a hiding place. Now is the time to get under a table or whatever is nearby, ideally away from glass. Cover your head and open your mouth. Light travels faster than sound, but the blast wave is coming in a few seconds and you don't want to be caught unprotected. The blast wave is likely to smash windows, so ducking and covering is important. The mouth open part is to protect your eardrums, which could burst when the blast wave comes. Being able to hear and communicate will increase your chances of survival. After the blast wave, you will need to be extremely quick to act. Depending on how far you are away from the detonation zone, you will have a small window of time to get to long lasting safety. If you are far enough away to have seen the light, heard the boom, and not be burned, you will have between 10 to 15 minutes to get your supplies and bunker down. If there is a shelter 10 minutes away or less, you should get there. Otherwise, you need to work with what you have. Your chances of survival are better in areas with no windows whatsoever, so in a corridor of a big corporate building or a basement. If you have time to propagate, against or block up your smash windows, then do. Then get to a room without any windows at all, along with your supplies and medical kit. If you are able to grab a change of clothes, then absolutely do, and also you should grab any communication device you may have. After 10 to 15 minutes, the nuclear fallout will begin, and it will be a waiting game from here on in. It is possible that the telephone reception and Wi-Fi will be down. If it isn't, you should make your location known so authorities will be able to update you as to when rescue is likely. If you have a radio or any other information source, you should keep that going too. Radiation grains that drop in the fallout will lose their radioactivity over time. Depending on the size of the blast, this is likely to take a week or two. Waiting two weeks, if you have all of the supplies and shelter you need, is quite a safe bet. If you are ever caught short without supplies, then you may be advised to use your 10 minute grace period of the fallout to start to get some. Get any clean water you can, then after a couple of days, you can make a dash for supplies. However, you will not want to be exposed to the radiation of the fallout for too long. If you do venture out, you must make sure your body and your mouth is covered and that you shed your clothes when you get back. Those with the highest chance of survival from nuclear fallout are those who are well prepared with plenty of supplies and a place to shelter without windows. It is always worth knowing exactly what you face ahead of an event happening so you know how best to react within your capabilities. So there you have it, that is how you survive a nuclear attack. Of course the cities are the biggest targets, for those of you living in remote areas, you may not have to worry. If you guys haven't yet watched our which countries would be the safest in World War 3 yet, then go forth and and do so. If you can think of any ways to survive nuclear fallout that I've not yet mentioned, then let me know. As always, please do continue the discussion down in the comments section below. If you like this video, then please do give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and if you want to survive, make sure you stay subscribed to Life's Biggest Questions for more on our war series. I'm Rebecca Felgate, I will see you in the next video, but for now, stay curious, stay alert, and never ever stop questioning.